Okay, for this video, I'm going to go through walking you through how to create Z scores and how to create T scores uh, as well. So, in thinking about this, um, one of the ways I think to, to think through why why do we need Z scores is this example here. So, su suppose you score a 56 on a statistics exam. How did you do? And you would answer that by saying, well, I, I don't know. I mean, what is this out of? I mean, that would be one of the questions that you would have that most students have. Um, but also one of the other things you'd probably want to know is, well, how the class do? What's the class mean? And what you probably not aren't intuitively thinking, but is also important information, what's the standard deviation for the class as well? How, how spread out are the scores or how clustered together are the scores? And in essence, that's what the Z-score um, gives us information for. So Z-score tells us how many standard deviations above and below the mean a particular score is. Um, here's the formula that, that's listed here. And by the way, here, I'll, I'll, um, mu was taken, taken out of here. You'll see that in one of the next ones, though, here. So basically, this is just Z equals the score, which would be 56, minus, and again, remember, this is supposed to be mu, which is the population mean, divided by the population standard deviation. So that's our fundamental formula for this. So the purpose for this gives us more information than a raw score would um, and helps us to standardize an entire distribution so we, we have a sense right away of how a person did on it. And it also allows us to see outliers really quickly. Um, so if you have a z-score of six, you know, wow, that's an outlier. That, that was six, six standard deviations above the mean. Wow, that, you know, that, that's a very, um, uh, very extreme score that would exist. Um, the sign from a z-score, so a negative number, just tells us that, okay, it's below the mean. Uh, um, the positive number tells us it's at the mean. If it were zero, that means you score just at the mean. And then the number just tells us the, the standard deviation units, um, the difference between um, the score and the, and the population mean tells us that in standard deviation units. So, and then if we ever need to determine a raw score from a z-score, here's our formula here. So again, what we're trying to solve for is we're trying to find what that raw score would be. Here's the population mean, that was mu, that was what was missing in the other slide. Plus, and then you'll notice here, we'll take the z-score, so the, the idea is that we would already have the z-score here, and we're trying to find what the raw score would be. So the z-score times the standard devi population standard deviation. So remember our order of operations here. This is in parentheses. So we would we would do that first. Okay, we would multiply um, the z times the population mean first, and then add it to to mu. And then if this is a negative z, right, then it it would end up we'd be subtracting it from the population mean. Uh, and then you, the z-score is, is we use it to standardize the distribution. One of the things I want you to know is that we haven't magically changed the shape of the distribution. So just because if it was a positively skewed distribution before, it's going to remain that way. You didn't magically make it a normal distribution. The mean is always zero. That's what's nice about a z-score is you always know the mean is zero and the standard deviation is always one. So that's why it is that we like to use z-scores is because we immediately have a sense as to where the score fits within the distribution. Um, and then, whoops, excuse me, uh, the transform scores here, you'll notice a, um, a lot of times, let, let's say if you're, uh, if you have a son or a daughter and they've, they've taken some type of standardized test, um, they're not going to give you the score in the z-score. Um, and why not? It's purely psychological. If they, if if you opened up the letter and it showed that they got a zero on the on the standardized test, and let's say the Minnesota Comprehensive Exam, you would you would be furious about that. But actually, a Z of zero would be mean that they scored at the mean. So what we do is we just we create these transform scores from there. So. In psychology, oftentimes T-scores are what are used for that. So the mean is always 50 and the standard deviation is 10. Most of you have seen this example of IQ scores. So IQ of 100 and a standard deviation of, of 15. And then SAT scores is another example, a mean of 500 and the standard deviation of 100. So let's go through an example here. 
Uh, so suppose you score a 56 on a statistics exam. How did you do? Well, we, what you need to know is the mean and the and population mean and the standard deviation. Population right for this would just be the students who were in that statistics class who also took the exam. So what we see here is the, the population mean is 50, population standard deviation is 3. So we just put that information in here. So there's 50, there's 3, and our score was 56. So that equals, right, 6 divided by 3, which equals 2. So they got a z-score of 2 on this uh, particular exam. A z-score of 2 means that they scored um, uh, two standard deviation units above the mean. This would be actually it'd be a high score. And because it's a positive number, um, that means that they, uh, that they scored above the mean. So let's go through another example. Let's see what, what happens if we if suddenly we have um, a larger standard deviation. There's more spread in the score. So if we changed our standard deviation to 6, um, you'll notice here we've got uh, it, it certainly reduces our z-score. So now we have a z-score of 1 in this particular case. So you didn't do quite as well on this exam compared to everyone else at, um, um, when there's more spread within the distribution. Or an example here, um, if, if suddenly the score was uh, a 46 rather than 56, so if we've got now 46 for this, now we have a, a negative number here. You'll notice negative 4 divided by 6. And now we are at negative 0 0.067. Um, excuse me, negative 0.67. And so we scored we scored below the mean, right? Because it's a negative number. Um, we scored below the mean. I think that's where I wanted that zero. Um, and we scored about um, two thirds of a standard deviation below the mean. So we did. We wouldn't have done as well on this particular exam, in with that with those particular those numbers there. I remember in, in the slide before we were talking about transform scores. So let's say we wanted to create a transform score for the for the original that we had here. So we scored a 56 on the exam, and the the for people who took the exam, the the population mean was 50. Standard deviation was 3, and we got that z-score of 2. So how would we create a transform score? So remember, a t-score, uh, the mean is always 50, and the standard deviation is always 10. And you, so you see this on psychological assessments that they'll use that, and it's helpful. Um, like the California Psychological Inventory, they use, they use t-scores. And you can get a sense right away as to how an individual scored on a particular scale. And so here's the formula that we would use, okay, for this. So remember, we're solving for x. We're trying to find a t-score for, for the individual, so a t-score. And then that equals the population mean for a t-score is 50, okay, plus our z-score that we just found was 2, so I put the 2 in there, um, times, and then our standard deviation is 10. So that equals 50 plus 20 which equals 70. So their t-score would be 70. And you'll notice they scored, the standard deviation units are in, are in tens. So they scored two standard deviation units above the mean. So that's why it is that they, they have a 70 for that particular one. So that's why it is, that's how it is that we'll, we'll use transform scores, uh, in, uh, how we can create transform scores uh, in this example. So remember we're just we're using this formula instead and we're plugging in these numbers for for the population mean and for the population standard deviation.